Halloween for hunger. It's been going strong now for 25 years with the goal of stocking the shelves at neighbor to neighbor. Also generating some income as well to, to donate to those in need. Their kickoff meeting was last week and Cable 14 and THN. We were up there with the organizer and some of the students tell us more about this year's Halloween for hunger. Check it out, folks. John, you're joining me now here at St. Thomas More, and uh, we just came out of one of your inspirational talks with the group of volunteers you have for the annual Halloween for Hunger 25 years. Talk to us about those 25 years and, and what you've seen and what it means to you. If I knew 25 years ago that it would become what it did up until COVID, um, yes. I would have thought you were pretty good uh, if you had suggested that. Um, we started with 30 kids and one city block um, and gathered, I think it was 2,000 items uh, of food. We didn't have a scale then. Um, but just every year, the students wanted to do more and more and more students wanted to do it because it just, it's, it's not just something that is great for the, for the community um, in terms of supporting those who need it. Uh, it's fun for the students. They love going door to door because they're too old to go trick or treating now. So they go out on Halloween night like they used to but now it's for a good cause, of course, so we love doing it. You mentioned you have some personal connections to why you are so involved. Yes, you're a teacher, you've been doing that for many years. Do you care about talking about your personal reasons why this means so much to you? Sure. Um, so when I graduated teacher's college in the mid nineties, um, there were no jobs here. So I decided to visit my friend out in British Columbia in Victoria and through a random series of events, I ended up in Northern BC. I didn't have a job uh, and I did my best to uh, find a job teaching, uh, just supply work. And the first month or so was a bit rough uh, trying to find work. So I actually had to go to a food bank myself. Um, so I understand that, um, you know, that mental process of, of reserving um, whatever dignity you have and realizing that there's more important things than you dignified. So I understand how difficult that is to go through that process and make that decision to ask for help. We're in a housing crisis. Yes. We have homelessness, we have encampments, and the food banks are needed more now than ever. You're messaging to the students as to why they should get not involved, not just for volunteer hours, but for really giving back. Yeah, that's, that's so important in our society. Uh, volunteering, as we all know, has, has gone down. Um, the students must complete 40 hours of, uh, you know, that's something new uh, that came about in my tenure, uh, uh, where they're voluntold to volunteer to get a taste for it because we've kind of lost that sense of our volunteers. And, um, but I see the impact that it has on us. Uh, uh, when they get a taste for it, they'd want to do more. Like 40 is just, that's nothing. That's just a work week. Sure, can we do more? Can we, sure, of course we can. Let's, let's figure out a way to help out. And I love, uh, I, I've had an older student go through this. I've had a younger student who's done, able to do a couple years. How they're kind of passing the torch year after year. And you're in that room. I was in that cafeteria. They're all in it together. They, they're excited. That must give you a lot of satisfaction too. Absolutely. Just to see... The excitement, like you said, on their on their face. I mean, uh, we give them an opportunity to help in a, in a really impactful way. Um, when they they don't know it yet, but when they see that that mountain of food, we call it um, on the Halloween night, they're really going to be affected. And I have a feeling, as you will notice, on Halloween night, we have alumni coming back year after year after year because it's like you said, it's not about the hours; it's about what they can get back. Uh, we talked about how crazy it's going to be here on Halloween night. I know it, it's that's when the real party begins, but that's also when a lot of the blood, sweat, and tears happen. And it's basically everyone on board uh, for those number of hours. But then you're going to be dropping the food off. And you have wonderful part of this. Let's talk about the Hamilton food bit. Yes, so we give our um, uh, uh, proceeds to neighbors' neighbors. Uh, they're the only food banks uh, on the mountains. Um, that serves the entire mountain, uh, and they're struggling right now. Uh, for the longest time, they had, I think, 11 or 1,200 families they were serving every month up until COVID. 
And then after COVID, it was, it got higher and higher. They're struggling and it's not just their food bank. They're part of food share and they did all help each other out. But you went to a meeting at neighbor's neighbor and their shelves tips hard. John, uh, foods are better through Hamilton, but hopefully after Halloween and the work that you do, my friend, thank you so much. And of course, the wonderful students could be, there'll be something there for those that need it. Uh, you're an inspiration, sir. Thank you so much for your time. Any final words out there oh. to the people um, that want to donate and want to get involved? Just be as generous as you can. Uh, there's two ways to help. Uh, our coverage area is rather large, but if you find yourself outside our coverage areas, um, we do have a, uh, a web page, part of the Neighbor to Neighbor web page, where you can donate uh, monetarily, which helps out immensely. They have partnerships and they can make every dollar stretch into nine or ten. So you know, every dollar counts. Can you guys tell me about what's going on? What's what's the event about? What is Halloween for Hunger? So Halloween for Hunger is a student-run like campaign, and what we try to do is we collect canned goods and raise monetary donations for neighbor to neighbor. So today was our general meeting, and today we handed out the flyers, which had to be headed to 26,000 homes. And then on October 31st, students will go back to those routes collect canned goods, and then bring them to the cafe where we sort and organize them and then send them to neighbor to neighbor. No. So why are events like these and the drives so important to their community? So um, we're very big on like giving back to our communities. So I felt like this was like the perfect way to do so. And then, yeah, especially this is our 25th annual. So we've been doing this for 25 years now, and it just makes such a huge impact on our community. Like um, the food we collect here is about 8% of neighbor to neighbors food donations yearly. So it makes a huge dent in the community. So why should students, I know this is a high school where lots of students are participating. So why should the students participate? Well, obviously it's for a good cause, but by doing so, they also receive hours for doing this, which we need to graduate. And also it's like a big way for them to also help out in the community as well. It's so eye-opening, especially because you never know, like, it could be your neighbor, it could be your classmate who you're actually helping through this cause. So it's just a great way for them to, like, get involved in our literal community. Well, Hamilton, as always, thank you very much for joining us. And make sure you tune in next week as we're joined by more of the movers and shakers that make Hamilton a great and vibrant community. In the meantime, please make sure you scan the QR code Halloween for Hunger. Donate if you can. And in the meantime, Hamilton, stay spooky, stay safe, and we'll see you next time right here on THN.